Hey everyone, this is another tutorial for the parallel cryoelectron tomography or PACE TOMO. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to run the actual acquisition script after you already set up all your target images, as you can see here. If you haven't seen how to set up your targets, please go to the previous videos. I will make sure to link them all down in the video description. All right, so I already copied the PACE TOMO script into the serial yam script editor as you can see here and of course we have all our targets in the navigator it's important to note that only target number one or your tracking target has the acquisition mark and has the text file containing the target information so you want to select that and you use that to run your script on Alternatively, you can of course use the navigator and set acquired items and run your paste homo script and it will run it on all the paste homo areas where for everyone only the first target has the acquisition mark. But for now, since we only have one target area, I'm just going to run the script directly. All right, so the start tilt, minimum tilt, maximum tilt are settings that are pretty self-explanatory. For the start tilt, what you usually want to do is you want to compensate for the pre-tilt of the lamella. So you actually start where the lamella is thinnest effectively. And of course, Pastoma collected those symmetric tilt series. So let's set this to not minus, but plus nine degrees because the pre-tilt we measured last time was minus eight. And it has to be divisible by the tilt step, which is three degrees in my case. All right, minimum and maximum tilt is actually independent. It doesn't have to be a symmetric tilt series. It will collect the branches symmetrically, but once it hits the end of one of the, or the max or minimum tilt angle, it will keep going on the other side until you reach the angle you specify here. So you could just keep it at minus plus 60 and one branch will be a bit shorter than the other. I like to have my tilt series usually symmetrical, so I'm gonna go from minus 51 to plus 69 and of course most microscope stators will be limited at 70 degrees so just something to keep in mind step size is the tilt increment i'll keep it at three degrees a minimum and maximum the focus can be a range if you want to basically increment your defocus with every target i usually like to keep it the same so i just keep minimum and maximum the focus at the same number and the focus or the step to focus doesn't matter the focus slope is something I don't really use anymore. This is in case your tilt axis offset is not perfectly defined and you still end up with a slope of the defocus versus your tilt angle. And if you know this slope and you saw it's quite reproducible between your tilt series, you can actually compensate for that by just applying a fixed defocus slope for every one of your tilt series. But if your tilt axis offset is determined quite well, this is usually not necessary. You can set a delay after an image shift is applied or after uh, the stage was tilted. This depends, of course, on the stability of your microscope. I usually keep it very low and I didn't see any detrimental effects of, of having low or no delay at all. So then we have some deviating exposure time settings. If you want, to collect, let's say, a hybrid tilt series where you want to have a longer exposure on your first tilt image for like a hybrid single particle uh, subtogram averaging approach, you can set an exposure time here. If it is set to zero, it will use the same exposure time that you specified in the setup. But if you want to overwrite it for your zero tilt, you can set it to 10 seconds or whatever you like here. And the same you can do for the tracking tilt series. If you want to really make sure that you track your target well and you're not confident in the contrast of your images or if your lamella is very thick, for example, you can increase the exposure time and the defocus of your tracking target. All right, the next settings are the geometry settings. Usually I would just set that to my milling angle, depending on how you loaded the lamella. Of course, it will be plus or minus. In my case, it is minus nine. And the rotation is just a rough estimate. As you can see, it's a bit clockwise rotated compared to the tilt axis. So let's maybe set it to, to 15 degrees. If you saw earlier the target selection, you know that you can actually measure these values more precisely. So I only put them rough in here. And and then I do measure them precisely for every target area separately in the, in the select target script. 
The next settings are only relevant for Holy Support films and I'll talk more about them in, uh, in a separate video. Then we have a couple more settings here. This is the beam tilt compensation. And this you should of course always set to true to compensate for any beam tilt versus image shift. But this requires that you've done the calibration before and I showed this in the very first setup video. If you're really paranoid about keeping your autofocus within bounds, you can also run an autofocus at every tilt branch on the tracking area. This will cause a lot more exposure on your tracking area and basically makes it useless. But if you want to sacrifice this to make sure your autofocus works well, you can use it here. I never use it. Another setting is a preview alignment. And this I usually keep to true. What that does is once it tilts to the start tilt angle, it will actually quickly take a preview image of all your targets and make sure that they're still nice and centered. If you trust your image shift or if it's not so important to have exactly your feature of choice centered, you can also skip this to avoid this additional preview exposure on your target. And the GeoRefine feature is something I also rarely use. I use it more often for the holy support films. But the idea behind that is that it takes the first tilt image and it runs a CTF find or CTF plotter to estimate the defocus from the actual record image of your target area and then uses these values to refine the geometry of your overall target area. This can work quite well if you have like your areas or your target area spread over a big area on your sample where the geometry might not be just a simple plane like we assumed so far. And also your power spectrum has to be really well defined and your CTF estimation should be quite robust. Then you can use this feature. But in most cases, it's a feature of diminishing returns, so I usually keep it to false. And then we have a whole bunch of advanced settings that I'm not going to go into here. If you want to play around with them, I have some short descriptions here and some longer descriptions in the documentation on the GitHub page. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Now, the only thing left to do is, as I said, select the first target of your paste Tomo run and click run. It will open a new log window, it will put out some of the settings here. For example, it will warn you that it read from the settings file a pre-tilt and a rotation value and it will overwrite whatever you put in the script. And then it will go ahead, realign to the first target, do a rough use centricity routine, do an autofocus, tilt to the start angle, align all the targets again and then just collect. So let's uh, speed things up and have a look at how it goes. All right, it's been running for quite a few tilt angles now. And let's say we found a target that is not very interesting to us or we saw some other issue with the whole collection. What we can do is actually just hit stop and it will stop the script. We can actually go and run the select target script on our target file here. Let's do that real quick. And again, the typical questions, you have to select a folder and it will find the target script, but it won't find the original target's file. It will find a run file. So we can actually go in and edit the run file. And you can see some of the options are grayed out here that are not possible to change anymore. But now you have the, the tilt series file listed here too. So if you double click a file like this now, it will actually open up the tilt series file so far. And you can see, oh, maybe this tilt series doesn't contain anything interesting. I don't wanna waste time on it. So I'm gonna go in here and just set it to skip. Let's check another target. And yeah, maybe this one looks interesting. How about target number five? It also looks interesting. So let's keep the other targets. We can even change the minimum and maximum tilt angles while the run already started. I'm going to keep them the same. I'm going to close it. I'm going to save the changes. And then I can go back and rerun the paste Tomo script on the same target file again. And then it tells me the target file contains recovery data. Do you want to attempt to continue the acquisition? Tracking accuracy might be impacted. So that is true. There might be a small penalty in tracking accuracy, but if you did not move the stage between stopping and continuing, it's usually not bad. And even if you move the stage, the errors are maybe a bit worse for the first couple of tilt images, but then lock in quite nicely again. 
either way, that's nice to have the option, let's say, if the run crashes for another reason, for example. All right, so let's recover. Oh, so it detected that uh, one of the tilt series file is still open, which causes some trouble when Serialium tries to open it while it's already open. So it asks you to close them. So let's go to file, close all files and try this again. Yes. And it will plot in the lot the recovery attempt. And as you can see here, it saved quite a few options from before. And it will go back to where it started. And you can see how bad the error is in this case. And you can see it's basically non-existent. It's as good as it was before it stopped running. All right, the run is just finished. Of course, the timing is not quite accurate because we had recovery in the middle of it. But let's have a look at the output. So this is the pace folder. And as you can see here, we have all the target images, the target view images we took. And down here are the tilt series files. So let's look at this target, for example. What is noteworthy is that these tilt series files are not yet sorted by angle. So this has to be done either by using iMods Align Frames or via your own custom scripts. But your tilt series files are here, the necessary mdoc files are here. You have the log files and you also have the output of the target run file, which again gives you the names and the, the image shifts and everything else like that. So yeah, this should be all you need for, for reconstruction. And that is how simple it is to run Paste Tomo. I know it might seem a bit overwhelming with all these settings, but once you get used to it, it's actually not so difficult. There's not so many things you have to change from session to session. With that, good luck for your own run. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you have any issues or feature requests. I'm happy to hear about that stuff on the issue tab on the GitHub page. And thank you so much for watching.